official Monster Raving Looney Party. The official Monster Raving Looney Party is a registered political party established in the United Kingdom in 1983 by the musician David Such, better known as Screaming Lord Such, third Earl of Harrow or simply Lord Such. It is notable for its deliberately bizarre policies, and it effectively exists to satirize British politics and to offer itself as an alternative for protest voters, especially in constituencies where the party holding the seat is unlikely to lose it, and everyone else's vote would be quietly wasted. History Starting in 1963, David Such, head of Screaming Lord Such and the Savages, stood in British parliamentary elections under a range of party names, mainly as the National Teenage Party candidate. At that time the minimum voting age was 21. The party's name was intended to highlight what Such and others viewed as hypocrisy, since teenagers were unable to vote, because of their supposed immaturity while the adults running the country were involved in scandals such as the Profumo affair. After being shot during a mugging attempt whilst living in the United States, such returned to Britain and to politics during the 1980s. The Raving Looney name first appeared at the Bermondsey by election of 1983. A similar concept had appeared earlier in the election night special sketch on Monty Python's Flying Circus, in which the silly and sensible parties competed, and a similar skit by the Goodies, in which Graham Garden stood as a science loony. There had also been a science fiction loony candidate competing in the 1976 Cambridge by election. Two others were important in the formation of the OMRLP. John Desmond Dugres Lewis stood in the Social Democratic Party's co-founder Shirley Williams. Dugres Lewis stood in the by-election as Tarquin. Fin Timlin Bin Win Bim Lim Bustop F Tang F Tang Ole Biscuit Barrel. Taken from the election night special Monty Python Squetch. He had changed his name by deed poll from John Desmond Lewis on behalf of the Cambridge University Raving Looney Society. Curls were an anti-political party and charity fundraising group formed largely as a fun counter-response to increasingly polarized student politics on campus, and they were responsible for a number of fun stunts. Their Oxford University equivalents were the Oxford Raving Lunatics. Dugres Lewis became such agent at the notorious Bermondsey by election mentioned above, where the OMRLP banner was first officially unfurled, reverting to his original name. Dugres Lewis stood for the new party in Cambridge in the 1983 general election. Another serial offbeat by election candidate was Commander Bill Bokes, a retired World War II hero who took part in sinking the Bismarck. Bokes campaigned, and stood for election for over 30 years on limited funds, always on the issue of road safety. Bokes proved influential on such direction as the leading anti-politician, it's the ones who don't vote you really want, because they're the ones who think. Bokes thought that increased traffic and more roads would cause problems and he addressed road safety with flamboyant campaigning and a variety of tactics, including private prosecution of public figures who escaped public prosecution for drunk driving. He successfully campaigned with such and others to pedestrianise London's Carnaby Street. While recovering from being struck by a motorcycle, Bokes was one of such counting agents at Bermondsey in 1983. A plan for him to run as an official monster raving loony party candidate in the 1983 general election, in such an Bokes' own home constituency of Streatham, was mooted at Bermondsey. But this never happened, probably, because of his increasing infirmity. By the time his predictions of unnecessary child deaths, pollution and traffic congestion proved correct, Bokes was dead having succumbed to head injuries suffered on exiting a bus. Electoral performance 
In 1987, the OMRLP won its first seat on Ashburton Town Council in Devon. As Alan, Howling Lord, Hope was elected unopposed. He subsequently became deputy mayor and later mayor of Ashburton in 1998 until he moved to Hampshire after such death. For over a decade, his hotel, the Golden Lion, in Ashburton was the party's headquarters and conference center, the first raving loony to win a vote. Rather than an uncontested election, was Stuart Hughes, taking the safe, conservative party seat of Sidmouth Walbrook on East Devon District Council in May 1991. He also took a seat on Sidmouth Town Council from the Conservatives the following day. His success was met with hostility from the local Tories. Hughes' reaction was to attempt to make their lives a misery for the next three years by refusing to pay his poll tax, then dumping scrap metal in the middle of the council chambers to the value of his unpaid tax when threatened with legal action. He also formed an alliance known as the Coastals of Independence and the sole Green Party councillor, giving East Devon's ruling Conservatives the first true opposition they had faced for decades. Hughes retained his seats with increased majorities in subsequent elections, and the final humiliation for the Conservatives came when he took the Devon County Council seat from the local party's chief whip in the council. Hughes remains a member of all three councils to this day, although he now does his politicking, ironically, as a conservative. To date, two councillors have subsequently become mayors, Alan Hope in Ashburton, Devon, and Chris Screwy, driver on the Isle of Sheppey in Kent. At the Bootle by-election in May 1990, the Lunar candidate received more votes than the candidate for the continuing Social Democrats. The OMRLP newsletter for June 1990 released by Alan Hope said, What is going on? And such himself appeared utterly shocked. When interviewed by the BBC after the result was announced, the story was a major headline in many UK newspapers. Ironically, the by-election itself had attracted little coverage. The little media attention there was focused on a bizarre row between Labour and the raving loonies. Relations between Labour members and raving loonies had never been good, but they reached a new low when the Labour agent tried to have such arrested for breaking an old electoral law forbidding the use of a public house as an election campaign headquarters. This law had been repealed in 1987. The tabloid newspapers then referred to Kinnock's Kildoys for the remainder of the campaign's duration. The result was the last straw for the continuing Social Democrats who had refused to accept the merger of the SDP with the Liberals to form the continuing Social Democratic Party. Although there have been far more prestigious loony results before and after, Bootle is still regarded by raving loonies as their finest hour, the watershed moment, when they had to be treated as a serious political party, albeit one largely lampooning the political world. Such also defeated a joint Plaid Cymru, Green Party candidate, at the Bitter Monmouth 1991 by-election and almost beat the ruling Conservative Party's candidate at the Islewin 1995 by-election later on, but by this time, the OMRLP were organised enough to make coming in fourth the norm in by-elections in England and Wales. John Tempest and his friend and OMRLP activist Willie Becker transformed the way the party fought elections. From the outset they were determined to make the OMRLP reap the rewards of being the unofficial protest vote party of the UK, posters, car stickers, and a never-ending series of headline-grabbing stunts made it easier for the party to gain publicity and ensured they were treated fairly by the media. Three by-election TV shows were cancelled when the OMRLP used the law to stop them having candidate debates that barred the loony candidate. Knowing Me Knowing You with Alan Partridge seemed to parody what might have happened had these 
shows gone ahead. The party attracted some corporate sponsorship from the makers of Monster Munch, Crisp Sand, Spillers, Dog Food, albeit to lampoon the manner in which Labour Party under Tony Blair in particular had become big business puppets. Tempest and Beckett suffered the same problems from the fundamentalist faction, but by the new people had entered the party. Future chairman Peter T.C. Owen believed that beating the other parties was what it was all about, and saw nothing funny about coming last with a handful of votes. Also Tempest was known as one not to suffer fools gladly. Beckett was forced to drop out of loony activities due to ill health, prompting Tempest to end his association with the OMRLP because of work and super uncommitments. He was also fed up with the lack of gratitude and backbiting from the fundamentalist faction that asked for his help to get them out of a number of scrapes, including a nasty election feud in Holmfirth between Melody Stanifith and Mike Madden of the rival RLGGP faction during the mid-1990s. Such death and its aftermath. Screaming Lord Such died by suicide on 16 June 1999 while suffering from clinical depression. After his mother, Annie, died in 1998, Such death drew tributes from across the political spectrum. There were less complimentary comments, such as those from Rosanna Cunningham, at the time MP for Perth and a columnist for the Scottish Sunday Mail. Cunningham claimed newspapers were more interested in the death of someone she felt had contributed nothing to politics nor society whilst ignoring the death the following day of Cardinal Basil Hume who, she felt, had done more. Cunningham had been upstaged by the OMRLP on the night of her victory at the ill-tempered Perth and Canross by election due to the death of Sir Nicholas Fairburn. A foul up by the SNP had meant that the nationalist supporters gathered outside cheered such Boyle and Beckett for five minutes when they were stumbled out of Perth City Hall first. While Cunningham was still trapped inside as the OMRLP conducted the crowd in choral renditions of both Spot the Looney and Let's All Laugh at Labour, such funeral, organised by his lifetime friend, the session drummer Carlo Little, was attended by members of the OMRLP and RLGGP, including Hughes, who with Freddie Zapp brought along a huge floral tribute shaped as an OMRLP rosette. They provided a more dignified entourage than such own relatives and romantic partners, who fought with one another at the graveside. The running of the OMRLP fell to Alan, Howling Lord, Hope and his late cat, Katmando, who were the joint winners of the 1999 membership ballot for the replacement for such. The OMRLP fielded 15 candidates in the 2001 general election, at which they had their best general election results to date. Recent History A biography of Such, The Man Who Was Screaming Lord Such was published in April 2005, describing what remained of the party as wannabes, never would bess, and some bloody well shouldn't bess. The manifesto, entitled The Manic Festo, for the 1994 European elections, and his dip in fortunes despite her previously strong local following appears to have killed the last realistic chance the party ever had of seeing a saved deposit. The party also suffered from an ill-needed row over its York branch, which led to there being no official City of York candidate and gave more credence to those that denounced the post such OMRLP as little more than a PR machine for pub circuit entertainers rather than a political party. Graham Cambridge, otherwise known as Eddie V, the Elvis impersonating previous candidate, wished to stand again, but the branch honorary secretary John Morris and the branch treasurer Gareth Sheehan elected to have the famous alternative artist Andy Miladio Hinkles as the candidate and asked V to stand elsewhere. 
Spidaz was known as York's Super Squatter, an activist of the York Peace Collective that led a series of highly publicized squats during 2003 and 2004 to highlight neglected, listed buildings. The response, however, from OMRLP headquarters was for Deputy Leader Boney Maroney to promptly expel Morris and Spidaz from the party. In York's Evening Press, newspaper of 12 April 2005, Maroney claimed it was for selling loony merchandise against Electoral Commission rules to be precise the OMRLP's financial scheme as registered with the Electoral Commission which meant any branch of the OMRLP taking money on the party's behalf would be breaching the political parties, elections, and referendums Act 2000 Part 2. As such, the York branch's alleged selling of merchandise provided a pretext to expel the entire branch, bar V, and declare V to be approved York candidate. V then failed to raise the £500 deposit to stand but the expelled York branch members had the deposit for Hinkles, now standing as a York Integrity Party, submitted within days of the notice of election being posted. Morris, Hinkles, and Spiders offered an olive branch to Party HQ, but with no response, and with the Socialist Alliance and the Green Party contesting the seat. Any hopes the Hinkles candidature may have had of attracting the alternative vote from his association with Spiders were dashed, he barely took 100 votes. There were however two crumbs of comfort for the third election in a row. The OMRLP found its candidates being debarred from the Hansard Society, BBC TV, News Round School, mock elections running in tandem with the general election and the party advised pupils to get voters to spoil their ballot papers in protest, or simply write, OMRLP, on the ballot papers in schools that refused to back down. In the event, 102 raving loony school candidates stood, winning in 21 of these, and taking enough votes in two parliamentary constituencies to be declared to have won the Seat, the two being Bristol East and the hard-line Tory constituency of Chesham and Amersham, neither of which have any history of active raving loony ISM before. The OMRLP's official headquarters was originally the Golden Lion Hotel in Ashburton, Devon, then the Dog and Partridge pub at Yateley in Hampshire, but this was lost shortly after the 2005 general election. Conference venues are now chosen in advance. The 2006 conference was held at Torrington in Devon, and the 2007 conference was held in Jersey. Although Alan Hope took over as party leader after such death, the real day-to-day -day running of the party has always been done by other party members, even on the council election circuit. Its vote, funds, and public interest appear to be in terminal decline, facing a tighter squeeze for the protest vote from other minor UK parties with more members, money, and organization. The party fell foul over its funding on 26 September 2005, when the Electoral Commission required them to return a donation of £350 sent by a supporter from the Crown Dependency of the Isle of Man. The party's last elected representative was R.U. Sirius on the 11-member Sawley Parish Council in South Derbyshire, first elected in 2005. He was no longer a member as of May 2007, having failed to appear in no less than 11 statutory meetings during his time in office. Due to illness, the party contested both the Bromley and Chislehurst, and the Blyneye Gwent parliamentary by-elections on 29 June 2006, and with it a degree of their previous by-election luster, a matter perhaps the result of the return of Willie Beckett to frontline OMRLP activities. Tragically in October 2006 he was diagnosed as terminally ill with cancer, 
and he died on Friday, the 2nd of March, 2007, less than a day after setting up his own MySpace website. His ashes were later used to make his farewell vinyl single. In March 2007, Melody, Boney Maroney, Stanifer, the deputy leader resigned from the party. Though she stood in the April 2007 Kirklees Council elections as an OMRLP candidate, the party's webmaster, Stuart, parish poisoner, Estelle did likewise. According to her the 29th of March 2007 interview with the Huddersfield Examiner newspaper, she was doing the party's books, merchandising and electoral law work with little help and had grown fed up with the lack of leadership accountability. Asking Hope to become party president whilst she would become official party leader, Hope refused, saying he was leader until death. Ironically, she had been the most vociferous critic of the raving loony green giant and rock roll loony factions that had left the OMRLP for largely the same reasons, and of John Tempest's more organized approach to elections and funding. She has since stood as a candidate for the Blah Party. Hope retaliated with a press release stating, with little appreciation of the irony, that, although the sudden resignation of a main party member was a shock, the Looney Party is not just one person and will continue regardless, and that, the party will never again be reliant on one person. The post Stanifath OMRLP succeeded in standing in the two by elections of 19 July 2007 in Sedgefield and Ealing Southall, but again achieving derisory results, Alan Hope acquiring 129 votes, and John Cartwright taking 188, beating the English Democrats but coming behind the Christian party of the Reverend George Hargreaves and David Braid. In recognition that reforms were needed, Peter T.C. Owen was moved from the honorary position of party chairman to that of deputy leader of the OMRLP, whilst Anthony, the Jersey Flyer, Blythe took over Owen's role. A self-styled pragmatist, Owen comes from the side of the OMRLP that always took the fighting of elections seriously and is one of four raving loonies to have scored over 1,000 votes in an election. Nick, the flying brick, Delves was the candidate at the crew in Nantwich by election. 2008 On the 22nd of May 2008, he is the party's current treasurer and has contested several general elections and council elections for the OMRLP. Delves finished 7th out of 10 candidates with 236 votes, coming behind the Green Party of England and Wales, United Kingdom Independence Party, and even the English Democrats. At the announcement of the result, the candidates were made to stand with the returning officer on the right side of the stage, whilst their agents stood some distance away on the left. However, Chairman Alan Hope, and Nick Delves swapped places so that Hope would be televised being the first to shake the victorious Conservative candidate's hand. Divisions Just like any other party, the OMRLP has long suffered from splits over policy. Here, the policy differences are regarding just how silly it should be. Many believed that the splits were flimsy attempts at poking fun at the series of splits going on in British politics during the late 1980s. At the Vauxhall by-election there were two Green candidates, a candidate from the Green Party, but also another candidate from an organisation calling themselves the Greens, and two National Front candidates from the Warring, Third Way and Flag factions, whilst at the same time feuding continued between the Social and Liberal Democrats and Social Democratic Party candidates, both products of a merger, but the splits were serious. Despite Peter, top cat Owen's blithe dismissal to journalists that, the only splits I'm interested in are the ones with bananas in them. Some members believe that OMRLP activities are purely for fun 
while others see the party in the same vein as Private Eye magazine, or programs such as That Was The Week That Was A Spitting Image, using satire to make serious points on issues of the day. Tensions have often resulted, because the more serious types in the OMRLP have managed to do what most observers considered impossible, actually achieve a creditable number of votes, tending to put the noses of the fundamental ISTS out of joint. There were also objections in some quarters to the continued presence of alleged brothel keeper and minor celebrity Cynthia Payne, a friend of such, who was at the front of many party photo opportunities, but continued to stand instead as a member of the rival Rainbow Alliance party of George Weiss. The controversy heightened after Weiss was convicted of heroin possession, owing to ill health. Lord Such became less involved with the party, and his last campaign was in Winchester after a by-election was called, when the main election was undecided due to a count difference of just two votes between the Conservative and Liberal Democrat candidates. Assisted by his campaign manager and election agent, Peter, Uncle Belly, Byford, the party gained 316 votes. Splits In 1989, Stuart Hughes, along with Danny Blue, Rolly Gillard, Melvin Hartshorn, inventor Mike Madden, and tree surgeon Stuart Greenwood formed the breakaway raving loony green giant party, mainly due to personality clashes with OMRLP chairman Alan Hope and other fundamental ISTS, the final straw being the latter behavior during a sponsored walk to the Silly Isles for the children's cancer charity, Click, where they only turned up at the start and finish for the media call whilst Hughes and others did the whole event. The 2001 election was followed by a series of disastrous by-election results and a further split. Town councillor Chris Driver formed the Rock Roll Looney Party with Mad Mike Young, and others dissatisfied with Alan Hope's leadership in a sad replay of the events surrounding the OMRLP, RLGGP split a decade earlier. This splinter, however, did not last anywhere near as long as the RLGGP, although in a replay of what happened to Stuart Hughes and the RLGGP, success at the ballot box ensured the failure of the new party. Chris Driver's election as mayor of Queenborough Town Council for the municipal year 2002-2003 curtailed on its leader's time enough to ensure party activities effectively ground to a halt. By 2004, the RRLP was effectively dead, with most of its members having rejoined the OMRLP. Membership The Statement of Accounts for the period 1 January to 31 December 2008 outlines membership at 1354, made of 173 paying members and 1181 lifetime, but non-paying. It currently costs £9.99 per year for membership, although a £19.99 membership with included t-shirt is also offered. Sir Patrick Moore, the British TV amateur astronomer, was the finance minister of the party for a short time. He once said that the monster raving loony party had an advantage over all the other parties, in that they knew they were loonies. In 1992, the Glasgow band Hugh Reed and the Velvet Underpants released the song, Vote Monster Raving Loony. They were, however, nothing to do with the official monster raving loony party. Policies and Electoral Strategy the OMRLP are distinguished by having a deliberately bizarre manifesto, which contains things that seem to be impossible or too absurd to implement, usually to highlight what they see as real-life absurdities. Despite its satirical nature, some of the things that have featured in loony manifestos have become law, such as being able to vote at 18, passports for pets, and all-day pub openings. 
Similarly, the outcry following Alan Hope's appearance on the BBC's nationwide current affairs program after he was elected, during which he mentioned that butter and milk surpluses were being dumped down abandoned mine shafts under European community rules to maintain prices, resulted in the distribution of such surpluses to the needy or charities instead. The loonies generally field as many candidates as possible in United Kingdom general elections. Some standing under ridiculous names they have adopted via deed poll. Such himself stood against all three main party leaders in the 1992 general election. Parliamentary candidates have to pay their own deposit and cover all of their expenses. No OMRLP candidate has managed to get the required 5% of the popular vote needed to retain their deposit, but this does not stop people standing. Such came closest with 4.1% and over a thousand votes at the Rotherham by-election, while Stuart Hughes still holds the record for the largest number of votes for a loony candidate at a parliamentary election, with 1442. At the 1992 general election in the Honiton seat in East Devon, the all-time highest vote achieved was by comedian Danny Bamford aka Danny Blue, who secured 3,339 votes in the 1994 European elections under the pseudonym of John Major. Bamford had also acted as an election agent for Lindy St. Clair's rival Corrective Party, and was a former close associate of Stuart Hughes. In the run-up to the 2011 alternative vote referendum, the party adopted an equivocal stance, advising its supporters, on 8 April, to vote as you see fit. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.